11 insanely twisted alternate dimension horror movies that will bend your minds. Sci-fi movies have repeatedly used the trope of a parallel universe, but what filmmakers don't realize is that this concept does not only exist in fiction. Ever since NASA pointed out at various possibilities and evidences of there being a parallel universe, several genres have been incorporating them within movies to create a spine-chilling ambience. Now, in this video, when we say alternate dimension, we don't just mean an alternate timeline. Here we are referring to full-on multiple dimensions or parallel universes that are far beyond what human beings can comprehend. This video will bring you a handful of such parallel universes within horror movies that will scare the wits out of you, but are still incredibly entertaining. Before we go into our list, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click from you, but it means a lot to us. Thank you. Let's begin. The Baby's Room, 2006. Juan is a sports journalist who lives a peaceful life with his wife, Sonia. They give birth to a beautiful baby and move to a new neighborhood, into a house that needs repairs. Juan's sister and brother-in-law soon visit the couple and gift them with an electronic nanny cam to place in the baby's room. Soon Juan and Sonia begin hearing voices at night, but they can't see anyone. He installs an alarm in the house so that they can be alerted of any intruders. After this, he began noticing a man's voice in the baby's room and makes his way to protect his son. Sonia believes her husband is becoming paranoid and decides to take the baby and stay at her folks for some time. With the help of a former journalist named Domingo, Juan investigates the strange whereabouts in his house. They discover that the noises are occurring due to Schrodinger's cat and the paradox attached to the experiment. He then realizes the existence of a completely different universe. The Baby's Room Directed by Alex de la Iglesia is a Spanish television film that exercises one's paranoia's limits to build up the tension surrounding an alternate dimension. Besides themes of insecurity and inadequacy, which are visible in Juan's character, the critical aspect to focus on is the source of the noises heard in the baby's bedroom. Alex de la Iglesia begins by dwelling on the supernatural, which makes viewers initially think that they were watching a mainstream horror movie where the family moves into a new house, but the film takes a quick turn. This film's alternate dimension concept is explained via an existing scientific theory known as the Schrodinger's Cat Paradox. It dictates that there is a cat trapped inside a box with a poisonous substance. The paradox is that observers are unaware of whether the cat is alive or dead until the box is opened. Moreover, the opening of the box is integral to triggering the effect of the poison. There lies the paradox in this well-paced film with a frightening premise. It's important to note that viewers are scared even more once they realize that it's not merely the supernatural that drives this film's central idea of horror. From Beyond, 1986 Dr. Edward Pretorius and his assistant Dr. Crawford Tillinghast make a groundbreaking invention. They have created a device called the Resonator that can stimulate a human being's sixth sense via their pineal gland. With this, they can see things beyond the scope of regular perceptible reality. When Crawford tries to activate the device, he sees flying creatures and is bitten by one of them. He immediately calls Dr. Pretorius. Although he sees it losing control, Pretorius refuses to turn it off, driven by his greed for power. The neighbors realize something is wrong and call the police. By the time they arrive, Crawford tries to escape the premises and Dr. Pretorius is seen decapitated. This leads to Crawford being sentenced to a mental institution under the supervision of Dr. Block, who is a sadistic person. A psychiatrist named Dr. Catherine McMichaels requests to oversee Crawford's case with Detective Bubba Brownlee's supervision. When she sees the resonator and activates it in a twisted turn of events, Dr. Pretorius arrives from an alternate dimension in the form of a mutant and wrecks havoc on everyone. Stuart Gordon's From Beyond might not have the same level of imagination and trashy demeanor compared to his previous super hit, Reanimator. 
Still, it's a unique piece of work nonetheless that reveals just how horrifying creatures from an unknown dimension can be. Usually, 80s horror films are aware of their cheesy special effects, but Gordon attempts to bring back real fear with tones of blood, gore, and Lovecraftian twist on the big screen. This film's central idea is driven by the fact that terrifying beings don't exist in an unknown world but can travel through dimensions to haunt humans even living on Earth. What's scary about it is that this creature can see us from their universe as well. What the fuck? The Mist, 2007. David and Stephanie Drayton live with their son Billy in a small town called Brigton in Maine. One night after a heavy storm, their house is severely damaged. The next morning, they notice a strange mist in town. David and Billy go to investigate the situation with their neighbor Brent Norton. They soon find themselves trapped in a grocery store with many other people as the mist surrounds it. They are shocked to discover that the mist brings frightening creatures that resemble pterodactyls and other ferocious beasts. These terrifying creatures are capable of killing people all around. What's worse? They are the product of a government project that's in the process of searching for other dimensions. Stephen King's The Mist is directed by Frank Darabont. He attempts to unleash horror within people through the supernatural and comments on how particular government experiments can prove extremely dangerous to their citizens. This film has a lot of horrifying creatures in it and mostly CGI made, but still, the design of the creatures is so damn interesting that viewers felt that they wanted to know more about the world beyond the mist. Darabont uses the important scenes of the supermarket as a medium to portray a shift in society's psychological and mindset when they are faced with a threat, and the power of dynamics are not in man's hands any longer. There are people who behave rationally and devise a plan to try and get out of the situation, and then there are those who believe that doomsday is upon them, and performing ritual sacrifices is the only way out. The creatures that appear from the alternate dimension come in various shapes and sizes. There is the 50-foot-tall arachne lobster-like creature, the lethal spider-looking gray widowers, and of course the terra buzzard resembling a pterodactyl that is far more dangerous. But the real villain of the film are not the creatures but humans. This is possibly one of the best horror movies of the 2000s. <laughs> Coherence, 2013. One evening in Northern California, eight people get together for dinner. A comet passes that night, causing an astronomical anomaly. This leads them to experiencing a strange bend in reality that leads to simultaneous alternate events. As these events unfold, they realize that there are alternate versions of themselves as well. James Ward Burkitt's Coherence, although created on a shoestring budget, proves that even without monsters and zombies, one can make the creepiest horror film just by setting the right premise. The horror in this movie presents itself along the same vibe as The Twilight Zone and is much creepier than any ghosts or monsters because the source of horror is abstract. The characters are seen trying to comprehend how certain things are happening before realizing that other versions of them have already lived the same experience. Coherence exhibits the possibility of multiple alternate realities where human beings perform the same actions through intricate details like notes and broken glasses, stuck in a time loop. The film might not be a masterpiece, but it contains a refreshing change in willingness to embrace the unknown wrapped in a mysterious, eerie atmosphere. In the Mouth of Madness, 1994 Horror writer Sutter Kane has mysteriously disappeared, causing all hell to break loose. John Trent, a simple insurance agent, is violently attacked with an axe while having lunch with a client one afternoon. Trent learns that the man was Sutter's agent, who was driven insane and killed his family in cold blood after reading one of his novels. Soon Trent is assigned the task of investigating Kane's disappearance. While searching, he finds himself in Hobbs End, a low-key fictional town on the East Coast that appears in many of Kane's novels. Trent learns that although a rendition of Hobbs End was created to promote his latest novel, 
there was never a time distortion, and neither was the place a replica of the one in the book. He is in utter disbelief to discover that Kane's novel's events are coming to life in an alternate reality, where everyone is driven insane and acting out violently. John Carpenter's In the Mouth of Madness unleashes an eerie feeling while exploring the fluid fragility of the concept of reality. After watching the movie and identifying the real concept, viewers are highly taken aback by the metaphysical idea that everything that exists in Hobbes' End is merely a figment of Sutter Kane's imagination, written in the novel. This happens to the extent that even the protagonist John Trent's validity is questioned. The film's opening sequence that shows Trent being taken to a padded cell implies that insanity is relative, but the audience doesn't understand this until they watch the entire film. The film's structure is non-linear and filled with hallucinations that might make it slightly tricky for viewers to keep up with what is real and what is occurring in an alternate reality. Nevertheless, this adds to its thrill. Sam Neill delivers an outstanding performance in this distorted portrayal of reality as he becomes more and more unhinged. Popular opinion entails that the author Sutter Kane is a subtle rendition of Stephen King, but an opposing school of thought compares him more to H.P. Lovecraft. Under the Skin, 2013 An alien-like creature roams the earth through Scotland's streets, disguised as a beautiful woman, and takes advantage of any man she finds. She begins seducing them as she takes them into an alternate dimension and strips them, after which they disintegrate into a liquid abyss. In a sudden turn of events, the alien starts getting affected by complex human attributes and emotions. She begins exploring her human side which leads to tragic consequences. Jonathan Glazer's Under the Skin is a fascinating sci-fi horror film that plays out more in the form of an experience to viewers rather than a traditional storyline. It contains clear themes of gender roles, sexism, and the power of lust. Unlike most films that use the concept of alternate dimension as a portal through which something strange emerges, Under the Skin treats the concept as a substitute for hell or condemnation of sorts. The film is deep-rooted with an eerie atmosphere and dark imagery. Jonathan Glazer aims to give viewers an entirely different experience from their own via viscerally intense special effects, sound effects, and an intense opening sequence that holds a certain ambiguity that is open to the audience's interpretation. No. The Cloverfield Paradox, 2018 When Earth faces an energy crisis in the future, a multinational crew assembled by Cloverfield Station tests the Shepard Particle Accelerator. This device is expected to generate energy that can benefit nations worldwide and solve all their problems. However, things go south when the experiment goes wrong and causes severe damage, opening a portal to an alternate dimension in the process. There, they find a woman with wires all over her inside the wall. They discover that she also works at the Cloverfield Station in the other dimension. The crew now has to find a way to return to their world, or maybe their experiment has changed their world forever. Julius Ona jumps into the movie with a grand introduction to the characters and a fair amount of action within a sci-fi horror film. It displays remarkable lucid photography courtesy of Dan Mindel and a wonderful soundtrack by Bear McCreary. It presents viewers with a handful of high-impact shock moments that begin with planet Earth disappearing and the characters finding themselves stranded in another dimension. The Cloverfield Paradox interestingly uses the concept of this other dimension to portray a solution to an environmental problem. It showcases a paradox within itself by also displaying what can potentially go wrong if high-flying technology is used to solve these problems. This is accompanied by the psychological fear of being stranded in this unknown world. Silent Hill, 2006 Rose De Silva is severely disturbed by her adoptive daughter Sharon's nightmares, sleepwalking, and screams about a small town in West Virginia called Silent Hill. The town has been abandoned for the last 30 years due to a massive fire caused by a coal seam. Rose decides to take her daughter to Silent Hill to investigate the source of her nightmares and her connection to the place. 
While driving there, a police officer becomes suspicious of her motives, but Rose shakes her off their trail. However, things take a turn when a young girl appears out of nowhere on the road before them, and Rose crashes into her, becoming unconscious. When she wakes up, she sees herself within the foggy streets of Silent Hill, and Sharon is missing. Christoph Gans' Silent Hill is crafted with remarkable graphics, special effects, and surrealistic images. These create the impact of both a breathtaking view, but an extremely eerie vibe amongst the foggy town, where one can see nothing beyond two feet. Gans makes this film resemble an experimental art film with terrific visuals and multiple dimensions of reality. It's an adaptation of Konami's 1999 video game of the same name, with the same amount of violence, gore, and thrill elements. Like the game, the film also has the real world where Rose's husband arrives to look for his wife and daughter and feels them because they are in exactly the same location in an alternate dimension. Additionally, there is the fog world where Rose is desperately looking for Sharon within Silent Hill. This is an extremely underrated gem that got unfairly judged by the critics. This is a really good piece of entertainment if you go into it without making an opinion about it. The Drownsman, 2014. Madison is traumatized after she almost drowns in a lake, so she confines herself due to her fear. Because of not being able to comprehend what happened to her while she was underwater, she develops hydrophobia. Soon, her fear and paranoia gets worse, and she begins having visions of a dark figure. After she struggles with this mental stress for a year, her friends attempt to help her by making her face them. However, things go wrong when they unknowingly open a floodgate to an alternate universe, a dark place where none of them are safe. As Madison and her friends explore the history and context behind her visions, this dark figure reaches out and begins dragging them into extreme, life-threatening darkness. If Chad Archibald's The Drownsman had been released in the 1980s, it would have been a cult classic of all time. The film progresses with utmost style and speed as it instills nerve-wracking fear of the unknown dimension on viewers. The film's dark figure is an integral part of the horror, but without stepping into the alternate dimension, the film wouldn't have been nearly as scary and exciting. First, it acts as the place that the protagonist visited where she develops her fear. And secondly, it's treated as the place where she and her friends step into it to get rid of this fear. Learning about the history and source of the alternate dimension is an extremely interesting piece of the film. Event Horizon, 1997. A group of astronauts in 2047 is sent on a mission to investigate the whereabouts of the long-lost starship Event Horizon as they receive a distress signal. The ship holds a legendary tale about how it mysteriously disappeared during its maiden voyage and reappeared after seven years in one of Neptune's decaying orbits. The rescue team of Lewis and Clark leave to follow the signal and find out the shocking truth about the ship's disappearance into an alternate dimension through an artificial black hole. Director Paul Anderson heavily draws his influence for this film from filmmakers like John Carpenter, James Cameron, and George Miller. In this film, he portrays the concept of the scientific discovery of the black hole as a portal or bridge to an alternate dimension to explain the ship's disappearance. It contains chilling visceral imagery accompanied by a suffocating atmosphere as the crew find themselves on this ship and attempt to make sense of the events. Viewers must know that the concepts and theories used in this film aren't entirely fictional. Some have been integrated from factual scientific theories to create an intriguing premise. What makes viewers smile is that every intricate piece of technology has been created carefully, with a few anachronistic details to instill humor. Unfortunately, this movie was released at a time when neither the critics or fans could comprehend its value. The craze for the movie caught up when it started to appear on TV channels across the globe. Event Horizon is one of the most undervalued horror movies of all time. The Banshee Chapter, 2013 Anne, an investigative journalist, is trying to seek out a friend of hers who went missing after consuming an undocumented chemical used for research. This chemical was being tested on civilians by the CIA in a project known as MKUltra. 
She has to unwind through a confusing trail of evidence until she finds herself amidst a disturbing world where several black ops chemical tests are under procedure. Here she also notices unexplainable radio transmissions and lopsided entities in the dark night. Anne is willing to do anything to uncover what had happened to her friend, but unfortunately, these entities are on her trail. The Banshee Chapter, directed by Blair Erickson, gives viewers a whole new method of visiting an alternate dimension. With a little bit of ambiguity and a whole lot of thrill, viewers are taken to a dark atmosphere with creepy images and entities. This occurs merely by ingesting a certain chemical, making the human mind a medium of communication for these terrifying, disfigured entities. Using monsters as a result of government experiments has been seen before in several movies, but Erickson takes it up a notch by also adding chemically induced sensations to the deal. These kinds of movies don't make big bucks at the box office and will be called out as underrated gems by critics after two decades of its release. But you don't want to miss this one. It's an example of experimental filmmaking gone right. If you guys enjoyed this video, give us a like, subscribe, and press that bell icon that will help you get notifications. We upload an awesome video every day. Have an amazing day ahead and stay safe.